Hello my YouTube fans. Well, it seems we're going to have a partial solar eclipse on the 23rd. Now I have three other videos um, on projecting the sun and how I made a solar projection screen. But uh, since we have a special event coming, I wanted to um, add to that in, in, a, in a shorter video essentially on how to project the sun in a quick way so that you can hopefully do this and take some pictures and post them to your YouTube, your Facebook, post them to mine, give me some comments because I am not going to be able to see this. I'm in New Jersey and here is the the best visible areas of the solar eclipse. So if you happen to live uh, somewhere towards the North Pole, you're going to be able to see it the best. If you're in Canada, of course. Um, but as you can see, let me point my mouse here. Here's New Jersey. As you can see, along the East Coast, there's going to be very, very little visibility. And even if I could see it that much, uh, it would be as the sun is setting. And I do not have a clear view to the west, to the western horizon. So unless I'm standing on somebody's roof, uh, I'm probably not going to be able to see this at all. So with that said, <clears throat> I'm hoping to share with you um, how to project the sun, to view the sun safely, but more than that, you know, there's there's a lot of ways to, to project the sun, and you've seen those uh, pinhole projection projects and whatnot. Those are rather silly. So, but before I go into that, let me again stress the importance of never looking at the sun directly and worse and even more important especially not through your telescope. What I'm about to show you is how to project the sun through a telescope or even binoculars if you have them. I'm letting this soak in that's why I'm pausing my voice. It's very important that you understand that you cannot look at the sun through a telescope, you will go blind. Not maybe, not if, not possibly, you will. Okay? Do not use a telescope to, to view the sun without a solar filter such as this one, which covers the entire aperture of the front of the telescope. This is what happens when you put your uh, uh, anything close to the eyepiece of, of the telescope that is pointed at the sun. Okay, this person, I don't know how to pronounce this name, this, is, this came from a screenshot of his YouTube video showing what happens when he brought, brought the piece of paper close to the uh, eyepiece of the telescope. You will burn your eye in the same way. Do not do it. And if you want to view the sun, uh, the solar eclipse, without a telescope, you just want to view it with the naked eye kind of thing, you not, you shouldn't do that either. Do not look at the sun at all, unless you have one of these. Now this looks like kind of a silly, uh, you know, uh, um, movie theater kind of uh, piece of cardboard, but these things were made by various companies with solar filters in front so that you can actually look at the sun using these over your eyes safely. Okay? So never look at the sun directly without these type of safety glasses. They have to say eclipse safety on them or solar eclipse viewers. Okay? It's extremely important that you know this and it, drill this into your head especially if you're going to show this to kids I want you to understand that you're never to look at the sun without proper protection especially when you are using a telescope to project the sun projecting it and looking at the screen is the safest thing you can do but as you bring the paper closer to the eyepiece that's when the concentration of the sun goes into a point and that's where you get your heat that's when you start burning things that's how you start fires if you're camping and you don't have any matches and the sun is shining, you can 
use a magnifying glass if somebody has particularly thick glasses on. Okay, so enough of the safety. I just wanted to make sure you understood that. So, <clears throat> as you know, there are ways of creating a silly kind of uh, projection screen, uh, rather, you know, uh, a, a solar viewer by using a pinhole projection. But this method is rather, um, how could I say, it's rather silly. It's, it's, it, first of all, you'd have practically have to stick your head in the box like this guy is, and the image is very small and very unsatisfying. It's uh, you don't see any details of the sun; you just get to see the the bite out of the sun that the moon has taken, so to speak. In order to get a nice image of the sun, a theater-like. I mean, you know, when we watch a movie or a football game or whatever it is that you do when you watch TV. You know, the bigger the screen, the more the theatrical, the better. Viewing the sun can be that way, too. Safely doing it by projecting it into a huge image that I've been able to do. Uh, I've gotten an image as big as 20 inches in diameter. A very bright, very detailed image. Uh, there are very various people on the Internet that show you how to do this. This one gentleman uh, created this bowl-like thing over the front of his uh, telescope which has a projection, uh, you know, glass in front. It's actually a plastic that you can get for, I forget, it's 10 or $20. But aside from doing this elaborate thing, if you happen to have a telescope or even a pair of binoculars, um, of course, if you use binoculars, you need to cover one of the objective lens. But regardless, um, here's one that, that you can do. You can tie a rod to the telescope the way this gentleman did. Again, the, the image is rather small. However, using a good telescope like this, the image is very clear. But as you can see, it's very, very bright. So you want to pull it away because I'm, I'm sure that that piece of paper is actually getting warm right now, even though it's pulled away to a certain distance. But imagine now, if you will, being able to sit in your backyard, your neighbors and your friends and your kids are over, and they're all going to view this thing in a theater-like uh, um, setting. Now here's here's one that they sell. I think it's a couple hundred bucks, maybe a hundred or something dollars. It's it's pretty nice. It's you know it's got a lens in there and it, and it makes a nice clear image. But it's again it's it's a little small. But uh, these these sort of things are all great and they're safe to to use for solar projection. But well, let me let me actually before I get to that picture, let me um, show you what if you wanted to do it like I did. This is this is an image that is um, of the sun that is literally about 18 inches in diameter, okay. And since the solar eclipse is coming up again, I'm not going to be able to see the eclipse. I wish I could, and I'm hoping that I can talk some of you into making this projection screen and 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 give, you know making some pictures and and uh, showing me by, by uh, uploading them to your YouTube channel or Facebook. Find me on Facebook. But imagine, look at the detail. Look at these sun, sunspots. These are sunspots. This is how clear. Now, this is done. I took this picture with a 2 megapixel camera. Okay, I darkened the image to, to make it better, but there it is. Imagine watching this in your backyard, maybe even having a, a an early uh, or a late summer uh, barbecue, you know, early fall barbecue, last minute barbecue, and enjoying this theater-like uh, representation of, of watching the solar eclipse with, the, with family and friends and neighbors. So this is what I'm trying to uh, help you do. So there, there's one of my images, and, and, and this, is, this is included in one of my other three videos. There's another one. That's my solar projection screen, and that's how I did it through my telescope. Look how beautiful that is. That, that piece of paper in the background is actually 22 inches across. So this image is actually at least 17 inches, maybe even 18 inches in diameter. It depends on how far away you pull the screen away. This one's a little smaller because I pulled the screen a little closer. So this is about 15 or 16 inches in diameter. But nevertheless, it's theater-like. So let me close this off and start to... Uh, tell you how to do it. So we don't want this this silly cardboard box uh, tiny little image pinhole projection stuff. We want to get a nice image on the screen 
to show everybody that's sitting in the backyard, have them sharing a few beers, a glass of wine, or whatever. So first thing we're going to need, we're going to need something to display it in. Uh, I recommend the black display box. You know, they they got these trifold display things that they use for various uh, uh, school projects and stuff like that. Uh, I prefer the black ones. I, I couldn't get a hold of one, so I ended up getting this one. You recognize it that you know the, of the images I just showed you. This is the one I actually used. Now the inside is white, but it's corrugated cardboard, so it's not smooth. Um, so I had to make the inside black first. This is a smaller one. Um, if you want to use a smaller, slight, slightly smaller, this one is, uh, how big is this? Let me see. I think you'll still be able to get a fairly large image out of this one. Um, I'm trying to see that number. It looks like five and a quarter, 11 by five. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit smaller, but uh, they have them somewhere in between sizes. But in any case, I, I recommend one of these, but you'll still have to put some uh, black uh, poster board inside of it or spray paint it black. Uh, if you're an environmentalist, you know, I, I did use black spray paint. I had some spray paint left in the, in the garage that I used. I used both. I used some spray paint and some of this. Um, but uh, if you're trying to uh, be aware of the environment, you don't want to spray that junk in the air, um, use the black poster board. Uh, I don't know what these prices, I don't know what store this is. I just, I just found this image on the internet. Maybe they're 75 cents. I think I paid less than that for mine. So you'll need some black poster board you'll need some white poster board okay um, they come the two sizes that I was able to get was the 22 by 28 which is what I used and then there's 22 by 14 which you can use if you wanted to make the smaller one which is literally half the size of the 22 by 48 uh, I mean 22 by 28 excuse me um, which you can use this this 14 by by uh, by by in this particular display board. So however you do it, you're going to take this display board, make the inside black first, then you're going to glue a white poster board to the back on the inside of this. Okay. Now if you're using this large one like I did, um, if you look at my other videos on how I made this, I actually have a video of making my new dis uh, solar projection screen. I actually had to cut like a vent on the top of this um, in order to allow the wind to go past the back of it so that it wouldn't fall over. I also used some clipboards, excuse me. <clears throat> I also used some clipboards to clip to the side of it to, to weigh, it, weigh it down so that the wind wouldn't blow it over. But in any case, so the inside is black, then there's a white piece of poster board to the, on the back of it, okay? Now, with that said and done, I want to explain to you how to align the telescope without looking at the sun. The way to do that, okay, I set up the telescope with no eyepiece in it, and I would point it, you point it at the sun by looking at the screen. And you use the shadow, and you can see how nicely aligned that is. And that's without the eyepiece in it. You can see that's actually the sun, but it's but it's not. It's out of focus. Um, in other words, you can see how it's pointed directly at the sun, and 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 uh, all the sides look like just the shadow of the profile is showing on the screen. Okay, that's an older image. I didn't actually have the solar projection screen made yet. Okay. Now, and with the solar projection, now if you have a telescope, let me actually, this is the viewfinder. This in itself is a telescope. We, were not, we are not going to be using this, okay? When you project the sun, you don't need to use this. Now, if you have a telescope without a removable viewfinder, then keep this cap on. I'm pointing to it with my mouse here, okay? Let me come out of this and show you my telescope that I have, I showed you an image of it already. This is, of course, my telescope. You can see I'm using the star diagonal, okay, to get the image. Instead of pointing straight through, I made it at an angle, but I'll get to that in a minute. As you can see, there is no viewfinder on there, okay, on here either, okay. Um, 
the reason for that is because it's not necessary because you're not going to be using it to look you cannot look at the sun especially through a telescope or binoculars because you will burn your eye so leave it off and if you have a telescope that doesn't have a removable viewfinder Okay, this is my telescope in the store. Uh, uh, this is actually came from their video, Orion Telescopes. As you can see, there's the viewfinder there attached to the telescope. It is on my telescope, this telescope, it is removable. But this viewfinder is a six power or seven power, I forget which telescope in of itself. So the safety of, of not, it's, safe, it's safer, of course, not to use it at all. So just remove it or not do not install it when using this telescope as a solar projector, okay? Again, if you have a telescope that has a viewfinder, okay, that is not removable from the telescope, keep the caps on it. And if your viewfinder is not a magnifier by itself, then throw something over the front of it, piece of, you know, paper, piece of cardboard, piece of foil, something over the front of it so that nobody can see through it okay now on some in some cases uh, here's here's an image of me using this the first time I did this where I did not use the star diagonal and I projected it oops I projected it straight through okay and I had to use this as you can see this here square thing in the front actually the second time I did this I turned it around I have black facing the Sun but in any case either way the idea of this is to create a shadow towards the front of the telescope so that you can see the Sun within a shadow and you can see this elaborate silly kind of like I have a garbage can cover and I have this table I'm trying to keep the image in underneath of a shade so that it's easier to be seen so after going through a lot of trouble with this I decided to go ahead and use the um, star diagonal okay in order to project the image at an angle so that I can actually have the screen in the shadow of the house while the telescope is pointing at the Sun okay you'll also see that I have let me just um, enlarge this you also see that on top of this I have another piece of black poster board and underneath of that is actually a piece of wood to hold it down it's glued to it uh, again adding weight to stop the wind from blowing it down I'm, I'm in the shore area and there's a constant breeze and you'll see there's a couple of clipboards you see the clipboard here and it's actually holding it down the strips of wood so that the clipboard doesn't damage the cardboard uh, so that's holding it down okay however you decide to do it or however you figure out use a little ingenuity but the idea of this piece of uh, poster board up here is to shade the screen from the sky from the Sun in order to to make the inside of the image area as dark as possible okay and there's an example of the now again if it looks a little fuzzy to you it's be, it's the, uh, the camera I used and I had to adjust these pictures there's a better adjustment of the picture you can clearly see sunspots on this one uh, this is the way to look here it is here it is fixed okay here's here's the way to look at the Sun imagine sitting in the backyard having a couple of hamburgers a couple of beers watching the solar eclipse like this this is um, I hope it's warm enough for you to do that but uh, this is the way to do it uh, a theater like image now again I want you to know that this poster board behind here is 22 inches wide so you want to, you have to see that this image is at least 18 inches, possibly 19 inches in diameter. It all depends on how far away you, the further you pull it away, the bigger the image. That's a beautiful image. Now, again, it looks a little fuzzy to you here, but that's actually because of the camera image. You know, I may not have been holding the camera steady. The, the, it's a two megapixel camera. You know, believe me when I tell you, seeing this live, it's, it's beautiful. This is the way to watch a solar eclipse. Now you'll have to have somebody. You'll have, you'll have to sit by the telescope, and use the slow motion control to to constantly keep the image within the screen, while everybody else sits in their other chairs. But uh, this is the way to do this. This is beautiful. Now I use the lowest power magnification I can. Here's another image for you. That's even clearer. Okay. Again, I adjusted this image. It's because of the camera I used. 
but um, you can imagine seeing that live okay as you can see the the top of there's the, there's that foam thing I have actually black on the other side okay so there's an example of it the you know the sun shining on this part and the and the screen itself is actually in the shadow of the house in order to make it as dark as possible which is why I use the diagonal okay so let's scroll through these I've already showed you these now this is this is an example of this is off the internet a photographer had taken this probably from the last solar eclipse that we had as you can see the even a professional photographer's uh, uh, image of, of the sun directly through the camera um, the sunspots are clearly visible on his his image and they don't look much different than what I had and mine is projected and taking a picture off the screen so um, where is that other image I'm looking for how come I don't see it well apparently uh, I'm missing something here let me see if I could find it I wanted to show you that the star diagonal that I'm using here's the eyepiece okay so uh, this is my lowest power eyepiece that came with the telescope It's a 25 millimeter it gives an image if you were to look at it with your eye of 30 I think 25 30 magnification I forget what it is I'll do a quick calculation um, that is my lowest power eyepiece if I had one lower I would use that because then I would be able to pull the screen further away from the telescope and keep the size of the image about the same um, as it is it's a little bit awkward because it's relatively close to the telescope as it is and even though that's a very large image okay let me see if I can find that other image I don't know what I did with it as the clock strikes eight there it is okay so regardless of that other image that I can't seem to find right now remember do not use the finder scope and if you if you cannot remove it then um, put something a cap over the front of the eye of, of the uh, finder scope in other words uh, this 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 piece here okay there's the cap on it so leave the cap on if you can't remove it and if it's not a telescope in in of itself you don't have to worry too much but uh, do not use the finder to line the telescope up you line the telescope up as I instructed by using the shadow of the telescope okay all right so I don't have if you have you if you're using a telescope with an equatorial mount by the way I don't have to tell you if you own the telescope you know how to do it but uh, if you're just starting off you know that you um, adjust the angle of the equatorial mount to your latitude and then try to point the telescope north or try to point the equatorial mount towards the north star um, or towards directly towards north if you have a compass use a magnetic north that's close enough there may be some minor adjustments but the idea of that is if, if the telescope is aligned properly with an equatorial mount um, you'll be able to I, I, I didn't actually do a very good job when I did these images um, I didn't have a compass handy uh, but you see these slow motion controls here um, if you do it right if you, if you align it perfectly you would be able to use just one control to keep the, the uh, um, telescope in a line with the sun instead of two if it's off as it was I was using both but I was only I only had to use the other control a little bit okay so that's that's not strictly important but uh, it, it, it becomes less cumbersome when it's aligned properly and you only have to use one control to keep the image in place so I'm hoping that this helped you and um, if you're still wondering if I left anything out I have two other videos three other videos about projecting the Sun please see those and um, I'm hoping that perhaps you could um, try this out weather permitting get your telescope out project the Sun make the solar projection screen have your uh, solar eclipse party and then um, post it to your YouTube post it to my YouTube make you know put a comment down uh, you also find me on Facebook um, and on Google Plus. If you would like to find me on Facebook, I have I have two groups, 
and Facebook that uh, would be welcome uh, for you to join and post some pictures uh, like this. These are these are my uh, earlier solar projection uh, with the sunspots um, when I first made the screen. Make comments. Uh, make a video. Let me see your your YouTube video. Um, Ask me to subscribe. I'll subscribe to your channel if you like. So there it is. I hope I hope this uh, helps you figure out how to do this. Again, this is much better. It's an 18 inch in diameter solar image is a much better way of doing this than that silly pinhole projection crap. So <laughs> enjoy. Let me know how it works out. Again, that's October 23rd. It's within a couple weeks from the time I'm making this video. And uh, I hope the weather allows you to do this. And I hope the weather is warm enough for you to sit outside and uh, even enjoy a, a little barbecue, a late, a late summer, early, early fall barbecue. Please subscribe. Keep looking up. And thanks for watching.